pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my good silver. Good morning, good morning, BigSquareRoadRoad.com. With your morning horn of Z's, your sip of chaga coffee. Silver. I said at 30 bucks I was going to stop the silver coin giveaway at Road Ruta. Right now we're giving away one silver Ruta coin numbered double stamp with luster. Comes with its own burlap sack. It's the coolest coin ever made. And <clears throat> it looks like silver is making a move. Remember, we're buck 50 away. It's got to stay above 30. It could, my feeling is it's going to test it and come back, test it and come back. And then it'll jump to 32, 33, and that'll be the new floor for all you tech traders out there. Um, this is the end game for 170 years of Silver Moon Epidelation. I don't know where it will go. Now, obviously, the next the next kind of uh, stopping point would be $50. The all-time high in 1980 and 2011, right around there. Um, both of those were artificial, though. Mind you, everything is artificial in silver. Uh, Paul Volcker is the one who slammed down the Hunt Brothers, along with, you know, the U.S. government, our lovely U.S. government that loves to rig the silver market. Um, and in 2011, it was J.P. Morgan that brought the price of silver from 25 to 50 and then started the artificial bear market in silver uh, that we lived through for almost 10 years. <clears throat> uh, if you don't believe me, go to roadrunner.com. Look up uh, J.P. Morgan, Operation Silver Slam. They put a guy named Bill Daly as Obama's chief of staff for one reason, to facilitate the rigging of the silver market. Uh, that was the only reason. Uh, J.P. Morgan had just taken over the silver short from Bear Stearns, and then they couldn't get out of it, as Bart Chilton so nicely told humanity. Um, and the reason that Bart said they could not bust J.P. Morgan was a political reason. He said, we couldn't, we, we had them dead to rights. They broke the law, but we couldn't do anything. It was political reasons. <laughs> and then finally, 10 years later, the Trump administration finds J.P. Morgan almost a billion dollars for rigging the silver market. Why did Trump do that? Because J.P. Morgan was messing with the repo market. Yes, it was all J.P. Morgan, the criminal cabal. <clears throat> so anyway, when uh, silver breaks through 30 I'm going to stop giving away the silver coins, so if you want your silver coin, go to roadrunner.com, sign up for a one-year subscription, or you can renew. Any renewals get tacked on to your current expiration date. Let's talk about this. Great interview with the Wall Street Silver guys and my friend Andy Sheckman. Go check out this interview. They talk about the U.S. Mint claiming there's a silver shortage. Now, I talked about this over the weekend a little bit. I go way back, way back with the U.S. Mint. Um, Ed Moy came on a couple, like a month ago and was like, oh, we're at, we're running out of silver. Clearly times have changed. Ed Moy was the guy who was in charge of the mint back when I was screaming about them changing the rules or they hadn't changed the rules yet. I said they were breaking the law by not providing silver in quantities to meet demand. That is the law. Then they changed the law such that it was the treasury secretary who would decide whether or not they were meeting demand. Now, either Janet Yellen is a freaking idiot, and even her own internal companies are saying that there's a silver shortage, but the U.S. Mint comes out and says they're not going to make any of these new products. U.S. Mint is committed to providing the best possible online service to its customers. So they're blaming online. Now, check this out. The global silver shortage has driven demand for many of our bullion and numismatic products to record heights. A silver shortage driving demand, that doesn't drive demand. It's people wanting to buy undervalued silver that drives demand. In a free market, supply and demand always match in a free market. Shortages happen when you don't have free markets. This is like <laughs> Monetary Policy 101 for this guy, David Ryder, the current director of The Mint. David Ryder, remember that name, because 
Interesting enough, uh, on the road to Ruta, we just talked about him. Myself and Jenny Moonstone did a, a reading where I'll show you it in, in a second. But David Ryder is conflicted. He knows what's happening. He knows what he needs to do. He's being told by Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary. Now, back in the day, when the U.S. Mint was trying to do this, I I filed for two FOIA requests, one at the U.S. Treasury and one at the U.S. Mint. And I still have those letters somewhere around here because they responded to me. This was back, oh God, I don't even know how long, 10 years ago almost. I said, it's illegal. It is 100% illegal for you to stop making silver eagles. It's part of the Silver Eagle Law. And the Silver Eagle Law is very different. Like, Silver Eagle Law, it's the American Eagle Law. It, it divided up gold and silver. Gold, you were required to make it from U.S.-based mines only. Yeah, let Bernanke tell you gold means nothing. Gold means everything to the bankers. Um, but silver was different. Silver, they were required to buy, the U.S. Mint is required to buy silver at any price from anywhere in the world to meet demand. That is the law. Any price from anywhere in the world to meet demand. Anything short of that is breaking the law. Now, the person who decides that is the U.S. Treasury Secretary, Janet, Ye or Janet Yellen, right now. But here's the deal. Her own mint is saying there is a global silver shortage. So clearly, clearly, they are in defiance of the law. Your own mint is telling you that you are not meeting the supply and demand, demand, demand dynamics. Here's the deal. The U.S. Mint is required, is required to pay $500 for an ounce of silver if there's demand for it. $1,000 for an ounce of silver if there's demand for it. They're saying... Demands through the roof, and they're not offering the mega money for the blanks. And if they say, oh, we don't have the capacity, we know they're lying. How do we know they're lying? Because Ted Butler pointed out that it was J.P. Morgan taking millions, up to 40 and 50 million ounce U.S. Eagles off the market during the last 10 years. In the early 2009, 2010, 2011, we got up to 50. I think one month it was close to 50 million U.S. Uh, U.S. Eagles, Silver Eagles, were sold. That were made by the Mint at their various facilities. And now that I mean that number has fallen through the floor because J.P. Morgan is not buying them anymore. They got their over billion ounces. So this guy is lying. David Ryder is lying. Potentially his boss is lying to him. Janet Yellen. When I sent my FOIA request back in the day to Moy and to, I think it was Tim Geithner, both of the departments got back to me. The U.S. Treasury got back to me first and said, we have no information. I asked for, I want the correspondence instructing the U.S. Mint by the, the Treasury Secretary instructing him to stop making Silver Eagles. The Treasury said, um, we can't fulfill this FOIA request because it's the U.S. Mint you're going to have to ask. You know what the U.S. Mint said? We can't fulfill this Treasury this FOIA request because it's, it's the U.S. Treasury Secretary you have to ask. I have both letters saying, you ask them, the U.S. What happens is they make a call and they do it clandestinely. But they can't do, they can't even, they can't even claim that they are meeting demand because the U.S. Mint is saying you're not meeting demand. The global silver shortage has driven demand for many of our bullion and numismatic products to record heights. This level of demand is felt most acutely at the Mint during the initial product releases. In the interest of properly rectifying the situation, the Mint is postponing the pre-order windows. Now, they can do this with numismatic products, but they can't do it with bullion. It's in the law. The American Eagle Law says it specifically. They have to. No matter what they pay or where they, where they get the silver, they have to meet demand. It's the law. They cannot delay. They can't say, oh, you know, it's usually in December they say, oh, we, we can't because we're uh, retooling for the new year. 
products. Are you kidding me? Retooling? Every, they shut down for like a month. They got to like a month and a half. November to December, they'd shut down because they were retooling. How hard is it to change a die that has a different date on it? Silver Eagle hasn't changed in, <clears throat> I don't know, well, since 87, 1987, when the law was introduced by Barney Frank. And yet they took a month and a half to change. And then they used to have little stickers on the on the monster boxes. It just said the year. That's all they had to do. That's all they had to do. And it took a month and a half. The U.S. Mint is a freaking joke. So what I did is I took my friend Jenny Moonstone and I did a reading. And during this reading, we, we did a lot on the, we were doing uh, Theta, which I'll get to in one second. If you don't have any Theta by now, and with what's coming up in the next, Four weeks, three weeks, you're insane. All your cryptos should be focused on Theta right now. All of them. Nothing else is going to do better. I'll get to that too. But this guy, David Ryder, Jenny and I did a reading on him. These are blind. Jenny doesn't know who these people are. And I pull up their faces and she'll she'll initial take and, and she'll do a reading. And check this one out. This is We did this like three weeks ago before David Ryder came out with his announcement that the U.S. Mint is going to stop producing um, the Morgan Silver Dollars and the Peace Dollars because of the global silver shortage. And remember, he takes instruction from Janet Yellen. Now listen to what Jenny has to say about our guy, David Ryder. To add to Patton. <laughs> yeah. They'd probably get along, truthfully. I think so, yes. Okay. All right. You ready? Yes. I'm, I'm moving back to you know, the current day. Make it easy. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's the next guy. I won't say anything about him. <gasps> I'm, I, I, can I go run? I want to run. I want to flee. I want to get up and I want to run five miles away right now. Okay, so first thing I want to say, <laughs> no. It's just a big fat no. So no. Um, okay, I've seen enough of that. Thank you. Um, uh, no, no. So this person, first things first, and not to be, I'm not doing this, to, like, I'm not saying this out of, it's not me being judgmental. But the first thing I can tell you is this, this person is incredibly, um, uh, they're, he's warped, totally warped. Who he was when he was born, I know this is gonna sound weird. Take a shot, take a shot, take a shot. <laughs> Who he was when he was born is not the person that he is right now, okay? I can, and I know that clearly that's a very silly picture. Like, that's just such a comical picture. I wanna because, put some cards. Like, like I wanna say that in my experience, people that have the, the mask that is very, um, uh, it's not symmetrical. This actually, because the physical body will manifest what's going on inside the genetic code. That's just the way that it is. People get mad at me for that, but I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. Not my fault, you're ugly. You know, um, just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm being ugly now. Um, uh, it's that he is having some kind of inner conflict that like, I can see it. I can see it. It's like there are aspects of himself that are battling one another and that's literally like leaking through. So let me take a look here. I don't like him. I wouldn't want to hang out with him. I think he is he's not coming across as a health as an overall healthy person. Let me get some cards. Let me see who this person is. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm being I'm in a mood today. I don't know what it is. I'm just more fiery than usual. Okay, so okay, so we have the Ace of Pentacles, Princess of Wands, the Lovers, and the Star. All right, so what I will say is he does appear to be a solutions-based person. Um, he may have a very um, an in-depth understanding. There's an in-depth understanding of the mechanism. There's something he understands mechanisms, systems better than most people. Um, he has there's somebody close to him that controls like half of his psyche. That's one thing I'm getting very, very strong. There is literally some some energy, a female uh, in uh, like half of his, like one part of the hemisphere of the brain that controls a lot of decision-making. And honestly, like that kind of explains where he's like at war. It's like he's being controlled, but he's trying to fight it. Um, I kind of, I feel so bad right now because these cards actually look good and I feel bad, <laughs> but that's so typical of me. Um, he may actually be working on some kind of, um, solution 
for the marriage. I know this is going to sound weird, but take a shot. But the marriage between two systems, he is trying to, for better or for worse, conjoin two entities, two parties right now. Um, I mean, but it's so weird because that's what it looked like he was doing inside his body. And that's why his face is like this. I'm sorry, Vic. Hey, you're awesome. You're on it. Keep going. Okay. Um, we do have the star card. We have Aquarius energy, um, which tells me that for better or for worse, this person is involved with the greater plan. He is involved with the greater plan. He has some kind of, I want to see, I almost see him as a kind of uh, liaison between two entities and he is trying to bridge them together. Solutions based person. I feel so bad. If he's a good guy, can I say, sorry, I'm going to write him. I'm going to, you could say, sorry, if you're, if you're, are, are you done? I, I am. I hope he never sees this. <laughs> this is, his name is David Ryder. He is the new director of the U.S. Mint. He is doing exactly what you said he was going to do. They're they are making a new silver coin that is going to be un, um, counterfeitable. Okay. He's in charge of both the, the bad guys and the good guys are in his ear. He's in charge of making whatever new currency we're going to have in the future, making it happen. Solutions-based, Absolutely. Is he a good guy or bad guy? Truthfully, I don't know. I, I, I don't my, know. my gut says he is a good guy, or at least working for the good guys. But okay. again, he's got half his foot in the old system, so I think he's involved with the rigging of the silver market and all that. Because you have to be if you're the director of the U.S. Mint. And in the same breath, he's working on a new system of of money for the United States as well. Okay, so here's the thing. He and like I, I mentioned, there's like a hemisphere of his brain that is being controlled. There is a very powerful feminine energy around him that is seeking to kind of command that shit, right? Well, is that a good, I mean, his boss is a woman. Really? Who's his boss? Who's the boss of him? Janet Yellen, the head of the treasury. Oh, um, well, you know. And I think she's a bad guy. Do you? Because to me, it looked like control for the sake of control. It looked like control for the sake of, you know, I'm in charge and you're just a figurehead here type of thing. Um, and he does, she does have a lot of influence. She's actually like, she could be very terrifying. She could have a lot of power, like more, you know what I mean? Um, I kind of think a lot of these people are gang members. We just don't call them that. But honestly, aren't they a bit of a gang? Like, let's face it. Absolutely. And, but I think Janet Yellen takes her, takes her you know, ad advice and bidding from the banking cabal. So right. I don't think her specifically, although she is in that position of being the head of the treasury, which is the head, which is his boss. And there, so there's, yes, I mean, the reading was perfect. Um, and here's the thing, his truest intentions. See, this is why I kind of feel like an asshole right now, because his true intentions are really, they don't look sinister. Right. I agree. They don't. So here I am making fun of someone because he looks silly and he looks funny. But honestly, in my defense, like a lot of these people that you show me are bad dudes. So I'm like, I think he's being like, even his face kind of looks like he's being torn by, you know, both sides are pulling at him. All right. I'm going to stop there. Um, I had to censor a little bit because <laughs> Jenny always gets me kicked, gets me strikes on YouTube. Um, awesome. Awesome discussion. Awesome reading. I, it, she goes on. There are uh, three, two others on this. One is uh, the guy from, I'm not going to tell you, I'll tell you, it's from Autograph. I was trying to get to not in not Tom Brady, the other guy from Autograph. I was trying to get to, are they going to use Theta? And the answer is yes. So if you're on a private road, go check it out. Uh, if you haven't signed up for the private road, hit subscribe today and go join the private road. Theta is running. Theta will continue to run. We're leading up. We got like 30 days until the mainnet 3.0 is launched. That's really going to kick into gear Theta. That's when they're going to announce, I believe they'll announce Autograph. I think Coinbase will come on. Everything's pointing to the end of June. Theta is going to run up 10x from there. It's like, boom, all of a sudden. Theta Fuel can do anything. I think the big guys are going to get into Theta. The, the little meme guys are going to get into Theta Fuel. And we've seen what that could do. Meme coins run like a, they are going out of style. As soon as Tom Brady says, buy Theta Fuel for these NFTs, Holy moly. So yes, you should absolutely be in Theta and Theta Fuel right now. Don't wait for the end of the month because more and more people are going to find this out. And there's going to be a run and then it's going to get really volatile. So why not get in when it's really low? It's Theta is going into the thousands. 
And Theta Fuel, 10 to 1. So that's 100 bucks for Theta Fuel if Theta goes into the thousands. And it's, you know what, you know what it feels like? Theta Fuel feels like when Theta last year, when Theta was only 35 cents. It's just ready to go, ready to go. And then all of a sudden, Theta went bang and ran up to 16 bucks. Theta Fuel is there right now. But again, I don't know which is going to run more because the big guys, wait till they announce that Autograph is going to be a, a, a validator node. <laughs> Tom Brady's company is going to be running one of the validator nodes for Theta. And then Netflix is going to get in. Netflix will want to be a validator node. And Amazon and Apple Computer will all want to be validator nodes. So the big money is going to be bidding on Theta. The little meme coins are going to be bid on by millions of little... Little NFT users and gamers. That's where we're headed. That's what I got for you today. Again, you can get all the Jenny Moonstone readings. So much stuff here, especially on silver. Now is the time for silver. It is happening, my friends. And when it hits 30 bucks, oh, look at that little slam down. It got the 2850. When it hits 30 bucks, uh, I'm going to stop giving away the silver coins. So if you want to renew, go for it. Um, and that's it. This is BigSquareRoadRoot.com. I'll talk to you later.